Thank you very much, Maria Rosa, and thank you also to all the panelists for sharing with us their comments, views, and experiences. As well, I thank the EIF for making this possible to today, as well as my co-host also, Ivan Stefanich, for, for his introductory remark also. So I wanted to give a few concluding insights before going on to the Q&A. And we have indeed listened to different complementary perspectives on how to make Europe fit for the digital decades. I do welcome the approach of the European Commission of setting quantitative targets that we can monitor, something which also gives a sense of urgency to grasp the opportunities the digital transition offers. The proposed digital compass will make it easier to follow up in the areas requiring further improvement. Skills, connectivity, digital transformation of our businesses, modernizing the public sector, achieving progress in all these policy areas is quite challenging and will be challenging. However, it's an opportunity in itself. I would like also to focus a bit on how we can make these goals operational. Indeed, the Recovery and Resilience Facility is going to spare member states to heal the wounds of the pandemic with a focus on the digital transition. The minimum level of 20% 20 20 of resources to earmark to technological related priorities will surely help many of our SMEs to go digital and will contribute to the digital skills of citizens and businesses, something which this panel also emphasized upon. While the investment to digitalize SMEs is crucial, it would not be truly effective if we don't update our approach. Collaboration is key. And earlier on, one of the panelists also said, um, and said and emphasized the importance of collaboration in this respect. I envisage also that a digital transition will be one for SMEs that is enabled by SMEs themselves. And indeed, there are SMEs who have already digitalized, who have found good models which could help other SMEs to do so also. Let me be clear on this. Large tech players will have an important role in the digitalization of the economy. However, I believe that when it comes to small and medium businesses, it is crucial to keep thinking small first. Many SMEs are active in the digital sector and are technological technology providers already. We should look at them to help other small, less innovative small firms match their needs with the appropriate digital solution. Local economic ecosystems at the center of the digital transition. This is another important point I wanted to bring up. I believe that such a process should start from the bottom up in order to respond to the needs of the local economic ecosystems. Intermediaries such as chambers of commerce, SME associations, education and research institutions, but also professionals, including accountants, for example, can play a pivotal role in, in, in enabling this process. Their activity is grounded in the economic fabric locally, and they could contribute to addressing the digital gap of traditional small firms by identifying any digital skill mismatch and linking front runners and businesses that have not yet innovated. In other words, we need to bring on board also the small craftsmen or the small restaurant around the corner that still rely on paper-based solutions. This is the reason why I also welcome the upcoming European Digital Innovation Hubs as a tool through which local institutions, traditional firms and SMEs providing digital solutions can enhance the technological network amongst also this important leap we need to make, this technological transition. It is essential to reduce the information and knowledge gap which our SMEs still face. And this is very important. They still face this gap when it comes to the opportunities with, which exist, including when it comes to the digital transition. The strong link between uh, digitalization and local ecosystems 
will also result in positive externalities for the territorial cohesion of the Union and contribute to the goals of the Green Deal. I am thinking, for instance, about the potential of rural areas that could be fully unleashed through the transformative power of technology and the agricultural sector, or through the new paradigms enabling the so-called smart villages. Tourism and hospitality is surely another sector which we must not overlook. Enterprises operating in this sector are mainly traditional, yet they could enormously benefit from tools such as data analytics to define their competitive positioning and their marketing strategy, or more generally to inform their decision-making process. The digital transformation of businesses requires time and resources. This is the reason why we should enable a real change, steering the efforts and our focus to the long-term horizon also. It's true that the pandemic keeps us a bit hooked in the short-term recovery, but this does not mean that we should lose sight of the longer focus. I welcome that the Commission intends to propose a digital com compass in the form of a digital policy programme to be adopted by co-decision of European Parliament and Council, setting the focus on delivery and constant commitment towards the common digital goals. As members of Parliament, we will be committed and will stay committed to make sure that the digital transition will be truly transformational, long-lasting, outcome-oriented and beneficial for all micro, small and medium firms. I look forward also to hearing further from our panel in the Q&A session and I thank you for this opportunity.